And so in my work at Economist Impact, we work really closely with, with quite large companies who are trying to figure out, you know, how do we best approach net zero strategies? Like, what, how do we do this? So is it carbon offsets? Is it carbon credits? And those nature-based solutions are becoming more and more popular. You know, people are trying to figure out how do we, how do we tap into those, those uh, carbon markets and those credits that do have those, those co-benefits. It's not just about carbon. It's about uh, really investing in, in the environment and also the, the S and ESG, so the, the sort of the community around, around it. And that's where I really see regenerative agriculture and, and the potential to, um, for, for carbon markets and regenerative agriculture to, to come together. And I think that uh, the carbon market system really is a necessary finance mechanism for regenerative agriculture, especially if we need to scale it in the way that we do. I mean, Can voluntary carbon markets serve regenerative agriculture? Surely, yes. Will they? We don't know. As you know, voluntary carbon markets develop with us working together for the benefit of the farmer and regeneration, exploring sometimes very tough challenges and ethical dilemmas together. Um, I see voluntary carbon markets in that space speaking more and more with regulated markets. Uh, and the common agriculture policy or the, the agriculture policy of the EU, because I think this is the scope of conversation we are having here, uh, aligning more with uh, the climate policy and objectives of the European Union, mainly net zero by 2050 and significant reduction by, by 2030. And for that, just like the CAP enabled Poland and Polish agriculture to really make tremendous change since 2004 till today in terms of where we are as agriculture, the CAP has to evolve from my perspective and European carbon farmers perspective from action-based payments in which we are in right now, which are basically not speaking very well uh, with the climate policy and the way we are measuring that to result-based payments. And I would uh, propose that we center those on soil carbon maintenance and enhancement so that the climate policy is married or connected with and speaks well with the agriculture policy. A lot of work in that space is happening, but it can go south, right? There has to be more of an open dialogue and people who want to um, sort of broker these markets and offer these types of credits, which have these co-benefits, which people, I think, and companies, again, are really interested in exploring more so than just um, uh, credits that are taken from like an energy plant or a, a solar power plant. Uh, and they are quite, they're premium credits as well. Um, so I think there has to be much more consultation with people, actually farmers on the ground, farmers who don't know anything about regenerative agriculture, farmers who are already doing, uh, doing um, these types of practices. Uh, so yeah, so I think there has to be more, more investment in the, in the research and ways to really quantify that, those carbon measurements. And obviously it will differ, it will differ per region, it will differ within regions, depending on what type of soil you're farming, depending on the climatic conditions. Um, so there has to be there has to be the sort of the the data and the science and the research element that has to be the consultation with the people who are actually doing this, and then the policy and, and, and governance support as well. If we look at nature-based solutions, um, we know that from, from reforestation. Reforestation is only successful if you take the human stakeholder into account. If you take the local communities, the, the trees will only stand as long as the human stakeholder has an interest in them, um, for, for good or for bad. Um, the same thing goes for agriculture. So we cannot expect uh, carbon to stay in the ground if the farmer has no interest in it. And obviously the farmer does have an interest for it, but the farmer also needs to sort of agree or need to have taken that decision um, to build their farm on that principle um, of increasing sort of natural, natural resources. So what basically when, when we say we high quality certificates, what we also include there is um, sort of the farmer benefit and the farmer benefit for us is really reflected in farm resilience, sort of also the economic resilience because regenerative agriculture from everything we see is more profitable at the end of the day if it is done well. Mm -hmm.